So today I've got a four and three quarter horse Briggs and, Briggs and Stratton Craftsman that uh, needs to be tuned up, gone through, and uh, gotten going again. I was told that it definitely needs a new power cord, but I also checked the oil yesterday when my dad brought it over, and it's uh, pretty black, so I'm just going to go ahead and change that. Uh, the inside of the tank looks okay. The fuel doesn't smell funny at all. It actually looks pretty clean, so we don't need to do a tank cleaning, which with these styles of motor, um, that can be the most time-consuming aspect of them. The primer bulb does need to be changed. This whole area needs to be cleaned up. And the air filter, I'm assuming it just needs to be serviced. Uh, if it's a little worse for wear, I do have another one on hand to swap into it. But I've got a new primer bulb right here. A new uh, base gasket for the carburetor. And that's pretty much about it. I also have my spool of pull cord. And it is also going to need a new handle, which I should have kicking around here somewhere. There we go. Probably be fine with this one, so we'll use that one. So the first thing we'll tackle is the top cover, the air filter, and the carburetor and gas tank. And then the, we can probably finish this video off with replacing the pull cord and hopefully getting a start out of this beast. I love power tools. And these clip off from up here. No Black Widows. I mean, oh no, actually there is one right there. Dead now. Definitely looks like it needs to be cleaned up a bit, so that's not too hard. I'll throw some uh, purple power on this thing and get the box cleaned up. Shape the carburetor, the filter's in, and it's in very good condition actually. But I'll go ahead and throw some oil on this and clean it up a little bit for them. But we'll go ahead and clean this up as well. And this is the type of degreaser that I use. Really nothing special. Preliminary check of the linkage. That's okay. Someone's been into this thing before. Simple enough. Remove the governor spring. Simple enough. So let's... Uh, clean this whole monstrosity up and get going from there. I am going to note that the retaining ring and the O-ring need to be reinstalled on the carb, so those will go in the mag tray. Let's get started on the gas tank. This thing is just filthy. So I'm just going to use a plastic bristle brush to kind of scrape a lot of this crap off and then I'll uh, give it a finer cleaning once I have it off, but I just don't want any of this to get into the fuel tank. Three, four, five, that's all of them. Uh, just remove the carburetor like so. Looks pretty clean below there but the diaphragm has definitely seen better days. I had a feeling that the diaphragm at the very least was gonna to have to be changed, um, just judging by the uh, age of the mower. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this whole thing off with some carb cleaner because it's uh, pretty dirty. And then after I get that done, uh, we'll go ahead and reinstall the spring and the little filter which normally you can change these, but honestly, if they're not too clogged up, and this one's not at all, uh, you can reuse them and you know not have any negative effect. So now that we have the carburetor itself, I've already taken liberty of uh, popping out the two tabs for the primer bulb. So it's really just kind of a uh, one of those things where you just kind of take your time in pulling these out. Retaining rings out and the primer's out. Looks pretty good inside. I'm gonna spray that out. 
So the trick with getting your new primer bulb in is use a 17 millimeter deep socket because it fits around them perfectly on the inside. And just line it up so both the tangs are going to seat properly in the carb. Push it forward and you might have to use a little bit of force to get them to seat. And there you have it. So the new primer bulb has been installed. Carburetor for the most part is pretty clean. Go ahead and finish the uh, cleaning up the tank and then we'll replace the diaphragm. Alright, so replacing the gaskets really isn't too bad, but it's noted that the paper or non-rubberized one is the one that goes up against the carburetor. So to make things just a little easier, we can stick this one on the tank as well as the other one. And there really isn't any wrong way to do this. But just make sure that you get the non-rubber one as the one that's going to be going against the base of the carburetor. And throw the carb back on. As well as the screws. Throw the spring back on. Set that aside. Now we'll grab the O-ring and the retaining ring. Throw the O-ring back in. And we'll clean this up just a little bit. But just throw the cap back on. And in place. Nice. So this part of the job is done. So we'll save the air filter service for when I service the oil on the mower. But in order to remove your starter recoil, there's a few bolts you have to take off, but really nothing too major. The good thing is all the bolts are the same size. So you have one up here. Another one back here. You have two quarter inch that are holding the dipstick tube on. Simple enough. And upon removal of both of those screws, what I normally do is flip the tube around like that just to kind of get it out of the way, but you know, remain, let it remain in place. Black Widow check. Might have been something going on here. But I'm not seeing anything too outlandish. Let's go ahead and pull this off the mower. So replacing these pull cords is another thing that a lot of people like to do different ways. I've always done it this way and never had an issue. But normally I pull it out completely, put some slack against it. And then with some slack against it, you have a little bit more leeway in getting the other end of the cord out. Just snip the end. I always like to snip it right here. Pull the cord out. So to keep it locked in place, some of them you're able to get a screwdriver in. Others you kind of can't. But this one does have a nub on the recoil itself on the wheel where it works perfectly with a pair of vice grips. What you want to do is line up that little tang in there so you can get the rope through. And I'm just kind of loosely going to install these locking pliers. One thing I like to do to make these easy to install is to kind of melt the end a little bit and then push it down with your finger so it doesn't turn into a ball. Give it a little more. This helps the cords stay together. It makes it really easy to reinstall. To reinstall, you just slip it back in the same way it came out. And throw it back in and through. Tie a knot at the end. And then pull the cord out and pull it tight. Nice. So, 
take our wire pliers off. And once we get the knot tied on the other side, this part will be fine. So the new handle has been installed. Now we just have to throw the bolts back in, throw the tank back on. And all this is going back on the same way it all came off. So you guys don't really need to see that so again. Now we're gearing up to change the oil. And just let it drain. So cleaning off one of these is pretty straightforward. This is normally what I just do. Try and get off most of the debris by hand that I can and let it work as a sponge. It soaks up all the oil. And that's how these things filter the air. So that's all nice and oily. Let's reinstall it. You know, we're just getting the drops now, so that's good enough for me. That is some black oil. So I've used this video for, or I've used this oil for a, a while now. Really good performance out of it. And usually about two funnel funnels full will get us pretty close to the top. So let's check the oil level. And we look pretty good. Like I said, about two funnels full will get us right at or really close to the top. So, level's fine. Well, it runs. Seems to run okay. It's not the best that I've heard them run before. But it seems like there's a lot of vibrations going through the deck and the handle. So it's, I'm going to tip the mower over and have a look at the blade and see if there's anything wrong. So I just unhooked the spark plug, put some vice grips on the handle, and my suspicions are correct. How well you guys can see that. But there is definitely a bend in it. And so here is the more or less finished product. Replace the cord, replace the handle, did a uh, full lube on it, lubed all the moving parts. Lube the uh, blade brake cable so it's not nearly as noisy as it was. I also zipped it down to the handle so it wouldn't flop around as much, which that does affect uh, how well these things work sometimes. Service the air filter, check the spark plug, replace the primer bulb, did the carburetor diaphragm, and uh, cleaned out the carburetor, what well, needed to be cleaned on it anyways, and changed the oil. But other than that, this thing's good to go, except for one thing, which I know for a fact they do know about it, because it sure as shit wasn't anything I did. Um, the crankshaft is slightly bent, so there is a very significant uh, vibration coming throughout the whole machine. Unfortunately, there's not really an easy way to fix that. There are some ways to do it. Uh, I don't really have the proper tooling to do it, nor do I want the liability of, you know, a job like that hanging over my head. But I will advise the owner that, you know, the vibrations are there. It's not necessarily going to hurt anything. It's just, if anything, it's just an annoyance. I mean, the mower, the mower might wear out a little bit quicker, but, you know, based on the state that this thing was brought into me at, there's the model number for you guys, but based on the state that this thing was brought into me, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't even really care all that much. So anyways, I'll get you guys a final start and uh, we'll go from there.
So for what it is, for how much they paid me, I mean 50 bucks is 50 bucks. About an hour's worth of work and that's what you got. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. You all stay classy.